Balaam is such a hard man to figure out. What it's like studying the life of Saul. Saul. Like, what is this guy Saul? Well, Balaam is a hard guy to figure out. And he started this all. And I wanted to be back. I want to get back to we're working through. We started a long time back to go through Revelation. And we're gonna we're in the going through the seven churches right now. We got as far as the church of Pergamus, and the Lord tells the church of Pergamus, saying to it, he which holdeth the sharp sword with two edges, uh, the Lord stands before the church with the word of God, and to direct us, to guide us, and to cut into our hearts, and then he brings up to the church of Pergamus that he has somewhat against them. Um, because they hold, there's some there that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Some that were in the church that were like Balaam. They were following Balaam. So this life of Balaam is important. Definitely don't want to be any way like him. He was hard to figure out. Looked so spiritual. Talk so spiritual. I challenge you to go through, go through, and read Numbers 22 through 24, and try to find where Balaam said anything wrong, where he said anything wrong. Seems like he always said the right thing, and he had tremendous prophecies, just amazing prophecies. Some of the strongest in all the Bible. And though he said the right things, he was far from doing the right things. He did not, he did not follow the Lord. And last week we looked at how the Lord directs us to do his will and how the Lord was trying to get Balaam not to go to Moab, uh, not to go with King Balak, and the Lord met. He already had told Balaam, not go. Don't want you to go. What are these men doing here to out? This isn't right, associate. The Bible clearly teaches separation from false teachers, separation from sin, separation from the world. And Balaam didn't believe in that. He didn't like that. And so he decides because he wants money. The Bible tells us he wants. You don't. You don't. Uh, he he talks like, no, I don't want any money. If you gave me, you know, my house full of silver and gold, I could not go with you. But the Bible tells us in the New Testament that that's what Balaam wanted. He wanted money. He wanted honor. He wanted position. You know, go down with the king of Balak, the prince of Moab. Uh, be a big deal. That's what he wanted. And so last week we looked at how Balaam starts on his way and how the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the Lord himself, stands in the way of Balaam with his sword drawn. And Balaam can't see it. He can't see it. He's blind. He doesn't want to see the Lord telling him no. He doesn't want to see the sword of the word telling him no. And he tries to go around, and the Lord hates him. He tries to go around again, and the Lord hates him and blocks him. And we looked at how the Lord directed Balaam, and how that, when it was all over, and the Lord blocked him three times. When all was said and done, Balaam kept going on his own way. Just keeps going on his own way. Doesn't matter what the Lord says. We want to pick our story up. So last week we looked at how the Lord directs us to do his will and how the Lord tried to direct Balaam to do his will. And 
to go God's way. But since Balaam did not want to go God's way, we're going to look at Balaam's way this morning. Balaam's way. The way the way of Balaam. But well, let's a little bit of review. We can pick up our story in verse 31. After the Lord has blocked Balaam's way, Balaam got grumpy. It's hard to be cheerful. Don't find happy Christians that are going against God's will, going against God's way. They get grumpy. They'll get grumpy at their wife or their husband. They'll get grumpy at the children. <clears throat> They'll get grumpy at the dog. Cat. Get grumpy at those anyway. We uh, get grumpy here. Balaam is, you know, beating his donkey, beating his ass. He, he's grumpy. Does he wake up and say, oh, this is so fun? He gets his foot crossed. Does he wake up and say, well, I want to go the way of the Lord? No, I'll just, I'm still going to go my way. Well, the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. In verse 31, the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. He bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Ooh, seems pretty spiritual. Seems like the Lord's getting through. <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord said unto him, <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, you know what it is? I sucked on a peppermint, and I said, uh, I shouldn't do that. I said, I like uh, Skittles or candy. It's true. Something about it. You got to stick to that sweet candy. Peppermint sticks forever. Says, the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass these three times? I wonder why the Lord didn't just come out and say, Why are you going against me? But the Lord says, You know, why are you uh, having such a problem? Why are you having such a problem with your donkey? Well, when you're having a problem, you're angry and grumpy about some your job or finances or your car or whatever. Why are you going against the Lord? Trust the Lord. The Lord does everything. He's working. He's working in our lives through everything. Behold, the Lord says, I went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse before me. Balaam, I'm just trying to help you because you're going the wrong way and it's perverse, it's twisted. Your way is not right. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. The Lord says, I would have killed you if it hadn't been for your ass. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. Now, Balaam says, I have sinned, and we mentioned this last week, but how Pharaoh said, I have sinned. He said, Balaam says, I have sinned, just like a kid that the teacher catches him doing something that he shouldn't have been doing, and the kid says, oh, I didn't know the teacher, I didn't know you were here. Balaam was not repenting. Balaam had this uh, neck for sounding so spiritual. Sounded is so spiritual, but it wasn't. It's kind of like how you have to be if you're a pope. If you're the pope. It's going to sound so spiritual, but you're not. Because the only way to be truly spiritual, to have the spirit of God in your heart, is to be born again. You must be born again. And Balaam says, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeases you, 
displeased me. Oh. Yeah, pretty clear. This displeased the Lord. The Lord came and, and stood in front of him three times. And he's still saying, if, 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 isn't it how? Uh, well, you know, you're battling, you're battling about something. It's, uh, well, if, if, I guess, if, no if, no if about it. Uh, this displeased the Lord. It says, therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get thee back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, go with the men. And the Lord is just letting Balaam go because he knows Balaam is so hardened in his heart. And it's just like uh, Moses. Moses, the Bible says, Moses allowed uh, divorce because of the hardness of their heart. But God had said it's not right. It's not right. It shouldn't happen. And he is, the Lord said, okay, you can go your way. Then he says, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balaam. Instead of going with the Lord Jesus Christ, instead of going with God, instead of going the way of the angel of the Lord, the way the Lord tried to direct him, rather go with the princes, you know, the, the impressive princes of Balak. We're going to work our way down. This new material, we're going to work our way down through. And look now, now Balaam is going on his own way. The Lord tried to get him to turn oh, God's way. Now Balaam is going his way. What is the way of Balaam? The New Testament mentions way of Balaam. What is the way of Balaam? Well, you could put, there's so many things as you say through his life, but we're just going to pick out some in these next verses. We're going to work our way down, Lord willing, this morning or tonight, we're going to try to make it down to chapter 23 and verse 6. But, first of all, we want to say the way of Balaam was the wrong way. The way of Balaam was the wrong way. Even though Balaam did, Balaam is oblivious, but Balaam was so hardened in his own way that he actually thought he was right with God. If you read through Balaam's life, he is so hardened in his own way, he thinks he's right with God. And he talks so spiritual. And he does things so spiritual. And he's not going God's way. He's going the wrong way. Look at Second Peter chapter 2. The Bible tells us about Balaam. We're talking about false teachers, which Balaam why is the example of a false teacher. And in Second Peter chapter two, verse fifteen, it says, Which have fought, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Balaam forsook the right way. He's going the wrong way. All these points, all these things we're going to mention about the way of Balaam, I have a W in them. But he forsook the right way and went astray. It says, Fall in the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. It's interesting that Balaam is called a madman. He's not thinking he's not thinking right concerning following the Lord off on his own way. The Bible says, clearly, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. There's your way and there's the wrong way. You know your way is the wrong way. My way is the wrong way. It's not what I think about 
what I'm going to do or when I'm going to do it and why I'm going to do it. It is, what does the Lord want me to do? Every day, every moment, what does the Lord want me to do? Maybe that the Lord wants me to walk off that job because something's been done that is just totally wrong and that cannot be condoned from a Christian. Things are changing. Things are happening. Uh, I remember Jim Knight telling about how uh, he walked away from a really good job because they were saying that you have to change this in your book. And Jim had great hours. Things were really good. He said, no, I have to obey the Lord. We're not gonna do- I'm not going to talk to my book. Guys, Jim likes to drive slow. Slow and safe. But I'm not going to do it. There's a right way. There's a wrong way. Our way is not God's way. Turn to Proverbs. There's so many, ver- I mean, there's so many verses about, about the way. The Bible always makes it clear that you know, a Christian is to go in God's way. And early Christians in the book of Acts were called you know, people of the way. And we know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we had to follow God's way, not our way. But Balaam wanted his way. And that's how the age we live in, when God warned seven churches, God warned the church at Pergamos, the day comes when Christians within the church want their way. And Proverbs chapter 14, In verse 2, it says, He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. That was Balaam. Balaam was perverse in his ways, despiseth him. He looked, he looked down on the Lord. Lord, no big deal. Don't need to follow the Lord. Not important. Turn that, uh, down to verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is to Balaam didn't understand his way. He, if he had understood his way, he wouldn't have wanted God's way. He went his own way. Verse 12, there's a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And Balaam does die without the Lord. We're told from Scripture. Verse 14, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. That's why being faithful to the Lord. Satisfied from yourself when you're faithful to the Lord, to the Lord's ways. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Balaam was filled with his own ways. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 9, the way of the wicked is abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Verse 10, correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Balaam did not like correction. He did not like being the Lord trying to get him to go his way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. Chapter 16. In verse 2, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. We think that, you know, we're right, and this is clean, this is good. But the Lord weighs the spirit, not just, not just the thing itself. What's the attitude behind it? What's pushing behind it? What's the motive behind it? Not just uh, they watch, say something on TV, and what is that trying to get at? What is the, oh, I think of uh, the Waltons, and I grew up watching the Waltons, and everybody loved the Waltons, but you know that the subtle teaching behind the Waltons is the change from a Christian family to 
that, oh, dad, you know, dad's not going to follow you. You know that uh, um, man that played dad on the wall? Ralph Waite. If you go to YouTube, he has a little, like, video commercial where he apologizes. Because he came to the Lord later in life. He apologizes for leading people for that attitude, for the character he played. He played a character, I don't need to go, you go to go to church, I don't need God. I am my own God. We want to go our own way. Balaam wanted to go his own way. See, our heart cried, God, I just want to go your way. Help me to see it. Help me to realize it. Way. The Lord weighs the attitude. I was going to say the attitude behind the wall for you guys. I just want you something to be left behind, to leave behind. Turn to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1. Well, Proverbs, on your way back to chapter 1, stop Proverbs chapter 4. Chapter 4 and verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. It's exactly what Balaam did. He went in the way of evil. He shouldn't even entered into the path. He is the example of the one that got on the path and wouldn't get off the path. So the Lord tried to get him to get off the path. The Bible says here, avoid it, pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Don't get on that wrong path. But that's just what Balaam did. And verse 19, it says, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And Balaam uh, was disobeying God, and therefore he could not see, and he, he wasn't ready to um, admit he was wrong and turn around and do right. And so... Couldn't see the Lord standing right in front of him. Couldn't see the sword of the word right in front of him. Look at Proverbs chapter one. You ever notice this verse in verse nineteen? Because the Bible tells us that Balaam, one of his motivating things was that he was greedy. It was about making money. So he wanted to make money through supposedly serving God. And it says in Proverbs chapter 1, so are the ways of everyone that is greedy. Everyone that is greedy of gain. So that's Balaam. What happens to somebody that is greedy of gain? What's the next part there? It says, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. You ever notice that? Isn't that interesting? Somebody that's consumed with getting, getting, getting takes your life away from them. It takes your life away from them. It consumes them. Here, the Lord wants you to, he wants you to work hard. He'll bless you at your business. He'll help you to pay the bills. But, whether or not the Lord's going to make you rich or not, that's in his hands. Whether he's going to bless you that much, whatever, however much. But somebody that is consumed with they get more and more takes their life away. Greed will take their life away so that they don't have any time for their wife. They don't have any time for their children. Definitely don't have any time for serving God, for following God. It, it, it takes your life away. Balaam went the wrong, he went the wrong way. Turn back to Numbers chapter 22. The way of Balaam was the wrong way. Secondly, the way of Balaam was the worldly way. The worldly way. It's not following the Lord. It's following the big deal. He goes down with the princes of Balak. Wow, this is awesome. I get to be in with the big deals, the princes. And verse 36, and when Balak heard that Balaam would come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is like a stronghold. 
on the border, the border of the area, which is in the utmost coast. And so the king comes out. The king comes out to acknowledge Balaam. Uh, the, Balaam now feels important and wanted and, and honored. Pretty interesting how Balaam, Balaam, I might be getting ahead of myself. Yeah. And it will, uh, some, coming up to a thought here. But, you know, the way of the world, look what Balak says here in verse 37. Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Yeah, but, well, ba Balaam came and Balak has earnestly, earnestly called to get Balaam. Well, if Balaam had been right with God, he would have said, yeah, I don't care how much you call me. I don't care how earnestly you call me. I don't care if you know you are just hounding me. I'm going to follow the call of the Lord. Does the Lord earnestly call us like no other? The Lord calls us and calls us. The Lord wants us to follow him. But now it's, it's uh, a worldly king comes along and he's reprimanding Balaam and did not I earnestly Send unto thee to call thee. And if Balaam had been right with God, he said, who cares? I'm following the call of the Lord. But no, he wants to please men. Balaam is all about pleasing men instead of pleasing God. And Balak says, wherefore camest thou not unto me? Why didn't you come to me? Hear the world. The world says to us, why don't you follow me? Why don't you come to me? Why don't you obey me? And the Christian's response would be, like, what for? Why should I come to you? I follow the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I follow my Savior that died on the cross for me, that gave his all for me. Why would I want to follow the world? You know, what makes you so important? And then Balak says to Balaam, am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? The world's honor, the world's honor, ah, the world's honor, uh, the, we follow the Lord, obey the Lord, go his way instead of the world's way. The Lord gives you honor that will not ever fade away um, and it's in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of who he is. And as the Lord Jesus was glorified, we will be glorified with him. You cannot beat the honor of the Lord, the honor of the world. You know, some somebody follows the world, goes their way, they might get uh, awards and think of these Hollywood stars, they get their Oscars and whatever all. What does that amount to in the eyes of the Lord? Nothing. It amounts to nothing. And if Balaam had been right with God, he would have said, uh, This is a joke. You know, you make me sick. This is, you don't have any honor to offer me. God, God will promote me. God will honor me. The way of Balaam was the worldly way. Balaam wasn't like Moses. What did Moses do? That beautiful passage. Look in Hebrews chapter 11. We're familiar with this passage. So beautiful. Hebrews chapter 11. Balaam wasn't like Moses, that's for sure. Balaam wanted all that the world could offer him. 
being in with the big deals, getting lots of money, being promoted. But Moses, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Just amazing. Think of all the riches of Egypt. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He wasn't concerned about what the king had to say, what the king was going to do, because he was following the king of kings. For he endured in seeing him that was invisible. He had his eyes on the Lord. Balaam wasn't like Moses. He wasn't like Elijah. Look at what Elijah did. Turn to 1 Kings, chapter 19. First Kings, chapter 19, Elijah came and anointed Elisha. But when Elijah knew that he all of God. It says in verse 20, uh, 1 Kings 19, and he left the oxen. Well, we should back up. It tells us, uh, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. 12 yoke of oxen? Elisha's a millionaire. He is. He's like a millionaire. Twelve yoke of oxen in Bible days, if you had one ox, it was a luxury. He has 24 ox, oxen. It says, plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. He left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. He said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Elijah's like, if you, had, you know, if you have any reservations about serving God, anything that's going to hold you back, then just you know, get away from me. But Elijah returned back from him, took the yoke of oxen, proved them, and boiled their flesh with a pinch of oxen, and gave them unto the people. Then he arose and went after Elijah, ministered unto him. Just took and took it all to fall the Lord. Peter and Andrew dropped their net to fall the Lord. Not Balaam. He's got a different attitude. He's got to get it all. He's got to get more and more. His quest to fall God is to get more money. He wouldn't be like, he would have never ended up like Elijah. Elijah just trusted in God and the raisin cutting. Just trusting God in the raisin cutting. Not, not Balaam. The way of Balaam was the worldly way. Thirdly, the way of Balaam was the wishy-washy way. He has no backbone. And he's changing all the time. Balaam's changing all the time. First of all, Balaam says, at first, it's Balak has to come to, Balak comes to Balaam, and he sends, he sends princes to Balaam, and says, you know, come with me, come with me. And Balaam says, no, I'm not coming. And now he's come right down to the city of Moab. He's come right down there. At first, Balaam says, to the men that come to him, go and get into your land. You just get out of here, go home. And now, Balaam's come right down, come unto Balak. And verse 38, Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. He's changed. He wasn't going to come there, now he's come. But he's still trying to sound spiritual. He's just wishy 
lawsuit. Uh, because, lo, I am come unto thee, have I now any power at all to say anything? I'm so spiritual. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm such a man of God that only God, only God's going to speak for me. Because the word that God put it in my mouth, that shall I speak. For he's so wishy-washy. Verse 39, And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kerjath Huzoth, which is a city of many streets, is why I read that the word means. So they go into town. They go into the big city. And Balaam is going with Balak, who he was supposed to separate from, who he was supposed to have nothing to do with, who he was he should have rebuked. But now he's going with him. Balaam definitely wasn't like well, he definitely wasn't practicing Psalm 1. Turn to Psalm 1. Definitely wasn't practicing Psalm 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Balaam was walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Was standeth in the way of sinners. That's what Balaam was doing. Was sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Here, Balak's intent was to curse, to scorn, to curse Israel. And he again, Balaam's right along with it. How can he? How can he have anything to do with him? How can how can preachers today link up with uh, Roman Catholicism? How can you link up with that? They don't preach the gospel. It is all a bunch of, it's a big religious system. It's a big religious system, a hierarchy. And the Pope, the Pope declares that he is God on earth. He is Christ on earth. That's what the Pope is supposed to do. Psalm 1, starting in verse 1, says, you know, you just don't go that way. But the, the man of God, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Well, Balaam, he wanted to be planted down beside the king with all the princes and in the big city. He doesn't want to be just a, a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. He doesn't want to just be planted in the Lord, loving the Lord, drawing from the Lord. He wants what the world, what the world got to offer me. What can the world bring me? The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. And this Balaam is just blowing in the wind. He's blowing in the wind. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, but sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Balaam's way was the way of the ungodly. It was a wishy-washy way. And Balaam, uh, he played politics. He was, uh, he was ecumenical. Would link up with any religion. I remember when I was young, I met this important spiritual leader uh, who was way up in years, actually in his 90s. And I met him. One of the first things he said to me, well, I just want to tell you, I'm not like you. I'm an ecumenicalist. And I said, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, he's 90-something years old. Uh, and I was young. I didn't know what to say. But now I think you know you come back and say something like, "Oh, so do you think we should we should link up? We should link up with everybody? Well, do you think we should link up with Muslims? Should we link up with Hindus, Buddhists? Who? I mean, once you start linking up with them, why don't we just follow God's word and separate that which is error, error, and make it easy? 
Make it easy. The way a Balaam was preaching, wishy, washy, he definitely didn't believe in separation. The way of Balaam was the wicked way. The wicked way. Things, once you start compromising, once you start separating from sin and, and known error, then you open the gates, you open the floodgates. And what on earth is happening now? Look in verse 40. It says, Balak offered oxen and sheep and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. Well, the practice was in those days that when you made a sacrifice, then you take some of the meat and eat it. So Balak, who wants to curse God's people, who does not believe in the salvation of God, he makes, a, he makes an offering, and then he sends some of this meal to Balaam. He's whining and dining Balaam, and Balaam's been sucked right into it. And, stuck, and it gets worse. It gets worse. It came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places. That's what false teachers want. The high places. The high places of what? The high places of Baal. You've got to be kidding me. What are you doing, Balaam? That sense he might see the utmost part of the people. When he went up into this high mountain, we're going to see later on, that was so that Balak could give Balaam a view of the camp of the Israelites camping down there, and that he could pray that God would curse them. The wicked way. Balaam's way was the wicked way. We are going to, I, uh, I know I've got a lot to mention about that. Uh, what has Balaam stooped to? How has he changed, though? What is going on? But lastly, the way of Balaam, this to me, this is the root of all his other ways. The root of all, this is, this is the, uh, this just shows, this just shows how uh, self-righteous this man was. Uh, in chapter 23, the way of Balaam was a self-worthy religious way. This is the way, this is the way of Roman Catholicism. This is the way of Jehovah's Witness. This is the way of Mormonism. This is the way of world religion, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism. This is the way of any, any, any so-called church, any so-called religion. Um, that does not simply believe that what Jesus did on the cross, his blood cleanses us from sin. Balaam puts on this religious show, big religious show. Balaam is said in verse, in chapter 20, Balaam said unto Balak, build me here. Why not, why not go to God's tabernacle? Why not worship in God's tabernacle? According to God's pattern. According to God's plan. No, no. Balaam's way is better than God's way. That's what the religions of the world say. Our way is better than God's way. We're good enough. We can get to heaven without the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary. And so Balaam, it sounds so spiritual. When you read through this story, um, perhaps the first time, or you haven't read it for a while, you say, wow, is that, he's really trying to be spiritual. Yeah, he's trying to be super spiritual, big and impressive. But God's way is that you humble yourself at the cross. God's way is that you realize you're sinful, and your sins have separated you from God, and you're on your way to hell without him. And there's no way but God's way, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
But Balaam here, Balaam says, build me here seven altars. You know, he's striving for perfection. Seven altars. Prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. He's going to give his best. This is going to be expensive. This is going to be a big deal. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. They're just doing it up. Do it up. Well, you can do it up all you want. You know, you could go to Mass. You could go to Mass every morning, every evening, if they offered it. You can light a hundred candles. You can pay. You can pay. You can, can give all your money to the church. You can put on, you can make yourself a big spiritual giant. You can even dress yourself up, you know. Put on, I always thought these gun hats of the 60s, 70s that would reach out like this big. And try to make it look spiritual. I thought, this is, all you do is make yourself look like a fool, I'm sure, in God's eyes. Because your spiritual show is not going to reach God. You know, a lot today with the uh, Christian rock music movement is, if you read the material, is that we're going to usher you into the presence of God. You come and worship with us. We don't need your big show of that filthy music. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ brings us into the presence of God. The veil has been rent. We don't need your spiritual... Oh, you're so professional. You're just like all the world. We're, we're as good as the world leads. You know, we're just as good as the world's rock group. Gag me. We don't need that. We need the Lord. Balaam puts on this show. And Balaam, then Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering. The burnt offering was to show dedication. You know, if you just stand there dedicated, then God's going to help us to curse Israel. No. Stand by thy burnt offering. And Balaam says, I'll go. I will go. And per adventure, the Lord will come to meet me. Yeah, he's going to come to meet you. Just like he came to meet Saul. When Saul, when God said to Saul, it is, better, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. It's better to obey and just believe God. Believe God. He has provided a sacrifice for our sin. So when it says, verse 4, God met Balaam, Met Balaam like he met Saul, not impressed with Balaam. Said unto him, uh, Balaam says to God, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and he said, Return unto Balaam, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt offering, his birth, he's still standing there. Thinks that his dedication is going to bring him through. It won't. One of them, we're going to close one of the most powerful passages uh, that talks about how your sacrifices will not earn you salvation. Just believing on the Lord. Are you familiar with this passage in Micah? Turn to Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. You heard this passage. Micah chapter 6, the beginning in verse 6, says, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? You familiar with these verses? Powerful passage. You heard these verses where it says, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? You heard these verses? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The prophet is just saying, what can I give to earn my salvation? What can I give to be right with God? You can't give enough sacrifices. If you gave 10,000 rivers of oil, 1,000 of rams, you can't give enough. That's what Balaam was trying to do. Impress God. He is so, so 
religiously self-righteous. God says he has showed the old man what is good and what does the Lord require thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. That is, God says, in order to be saved, you just humble yourself before God. You believe on him. You walk in his ways. Did you notice verse 5 of this passage? Look at verse 5. God precedes this passage saying, remember, he says, oh my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Siddim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. God is saying, remember Balak and remember Balaam? They tried to bring all these sacrifices they did not understand the righteousness of the Lord. Only through God's sacrifice. It's not through our sacrifice. Balaam, Balaam, the root, the root of all his problems, he didn't understand the righteousness of the Lord. He didn't understand simple faith, trusting in the Lord Jesus as Savior, the sacrifice God was going to give. And it really off like this. Dear Heavenly Father, pray that uh, you might take your word, hide it in our heart. Uh, pray you give us wisdom, give us understanding, give us discernment of the times. Uh, help us to see that uh, as you told us in your word that uh, this doctrine of uh, Balaam is working into churches today. You uh, just Draw us the wrong way. Make us go the wrong way. Uh, pray for discernment and wisdom and help us to uh, stand for you in these days. Thank you for your word this morning.